Welcome <laughs> to Munda Makeover. We have traveled all over Zambia to find hardworking farmers. We want to share their success stories and where their challenges. We will bring experts to help them gain the extra knowledge they need so they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers from across the country can benefit from our experts' advice while also learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they improve their farms on Munda Makeover! Kozi, mm -hmm. are you ready to dig deep into the world of farming again? Oh, absolutely. Mm. We have so much in store for our viewers. Like <laughs> what? Tell them. Well, so many lessons that mm. are going to help you make your farming better. Okay. And of course, adapt to climate change. But what else, Bikata? The fun part, Kozi. You know, we may be serious about farming, mm -hmm. but we are also mm -hmm. serious about making it fun. <laughs> mm. um, does this mean you're going to be telling us your joke? No, today I'll be very, very serious. Huh. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'll tell jokes all day. So have you no. heard about... Cozy, no. The... no. It's a new no. one! What do you call a farmer who has zero sense of humor? Cozy? <laughs> Arthur Abuino is a serious farmer who after having tried farming in various places, finally settled on this farm five years ago. I'm Arthur Abuno Banda. I'm 39 years old. In 2010, that's when I went into serious farming. Doing one thing at a farm, you cannot prosper, you cannot advance. Seeing that, I had to diversify. Once this sector fell, then the other sector will boost you. That's what has really helped me as a farmer to keep going. Like many farmers, he has faced challenges but has resolved to carry on calling Chongwe home. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello. how are you? I'm okay, how are you, sir? I'm, yes, I'm okay, how are you? Hello. <laughs> they are twins. Are yes, yes. They are. Ah, they are nice. Doctors. They look exactly alike. Ah, okay. I'm a family man. I'm a father of six. Okay. As you have seen, the others are in school. Mm, this is my wife. Ah, Fantastic. Sure. Okay, sure. beautiful. Ah. What exactly are you farming here on your farm? I do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. One, I'm into poultry. Then I'm into gardening. I do winter maize, mm. okra. Okay. I'm also into rain fed the maize and soya bees. Mm. Wow. I'm also into <laughs> beekeeping. Okay, now, Cozy, yeah. I've heard a lot of I, I, I. Ah, I'm no, a beautiful I'm queen. Here. Just a sip of the tongue. We. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are your interests on the farm? It's in everything we are doing. Nice. Fantastic. So it's okay. definitely a team. But we'd also love to know what challenges you've been facing, especially this season. The major challenge that we had the previous season is drought. Well, the twins can oh, go and okay. have some porridge, oh, okay. it's okay. Yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, yeah. okay. Then the other issue, there are a lot of things that I want to do at the farm. Like okay. this side, mm -hmm. I want to expand my garden, as you have seen. To put the pipes and the drip lines, mm -hmm. I can't meet the cost. When you tell us the challenges, we quickly rush to see what we can do about those challenges. Yes. Isn't that right? Gotcha. Bring to you possible solutions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. We will go now and meet with some experts. Mm -hmm. We'll bring the experts. Nice, fine. Okay, so we'll see thank you. you. Thank bye you. Bye. See you, sir. Bye bye. Yeah, thank you, madam. See you. Bye bye. 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 <laughs> bye. Maize is a Zambian staple. But the change in rainfall patterns has meant that getting bumper harvest has become challenging. Is there another crop we can plant or add to the maize that can do well in drought? With maize severely affected by the drought, farmers need to find alternatives that can cover them financially and that can be grown alongside maize. To teach us what we can grow, we have called Harrison Zimba from CRS to help us with this. I remember you said something like growing varieties of uh, legumes. Yes, I planted beans, uh -huh. 
pigeon peas as you can see, groundnuts, soya beans. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but out of all these legumes mm -hmm. and the, the cereal which is maize, mm -hmm. legumes they are doing better. Mm, despite the despite the droughts. Mm -hmm. So with these actually I'm safe, but with maize it's dried up completely. The pigeon pea did so well, but it's a small portion. Why is that? It was just a, a demo plot, a ah, demo block, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to test it, but when I've seen now that it's doing good, mm. in the next season, that's when now I'm planning to plant a big field. The pigeon pea is quite uh, drought tolerant. As you can actually see, within just two weeks of having received some rains, mm -hmm. it's still thriving even up to date. The management, even, even though it wasn't so good, but the plant is actually thriving. With the advice from the expert, we started weeding to help the crop get more moisture and nutrients from the soil. Looking at uh, the change in climate, you know, the rain patterns, what do you think a farmer can plant as far as legumes are concerned so that they can have something to harvest? You need a crop that can actually tolerate the drought. At the end of the day, be able to give a farmer something in return. Mm. As CRS, with support from CIMIT, there are a number of uh, varieties that we're actually promoting. But even with the new varieties in the market, for instance in groundnuts, most farmers are still planting old varieties like MGV4. It's been on the market for the past 20 years or so, and they recycle it each and every year. So there are new varieties that have been brought on the market that are actually uh, tolerant to these pests and diseases that are we are witnessing today and also just to thrive within the drought environment mm -hmm. so they were bred for that particular purpose so like uh, for groundnuts we have mgv8 mm -hmm. and mgv7 that was actually released so recently and farmers actually appreciating it those that have uh, had the opportunity to plant it they're appreciating it now i'm seeing behind us here uh, there are some groundnuts at least to them there's something down Okay. Maybe we can try to yeah, pull out one. Yeah, we want to see. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, there's something, but, but it's that just that I printed the late. Okay. Yeah, but it's still in the process of growing. Ah, okay. Sure. So you're hopeful. Yes, I'm very much hopeful that I'll harvest something out of this. So mm -hmm. what variety was this? MGV7. This is one of the varieties that we're actually promoting mm -hmm. after having received two weeks of rain. And all these varieties, we're looking at the rainfall pattern, so to yeah. say, yeah. So within just a short period of time, they will still thrive. All right. So clearly, the time of planting is always crucial. The planting for most of the crops, actually, we need to plant the first rains. Mm -hmm. They are when they virtually set in. For the soybeans, we also have kafue. So it's been improved on and it's something that is really on the market. Mm -hmm. The maturity period is just within a short period of time compared to other varieties that we've seen on the market. And the kafue beans is one of those varieties that was actually bred for that particular purpose to withstand the drought, give a farmer or yield the farmer something mm -hmm. equal to whatever that they might have uh, put in, mm -hmm. in terms of investment and the like. Remember, drought tolerant and disease tolerant legumes do very well in low rainfall. This will help reduce your losses in case of extreme drought. Plant different types of legumes on your farm for good diversification so that if one crop fails, you are covered. Our farmer has been doing off-season farming using flood irrigation. This wastes a lot of water and even labor. With climate change already in our farms, this needs to change. Last year, he managed to put a small section under drip irrigation, but more needs to be done. And this is where Munda Makeover comes in. Let's extend his drip irrigation and save more water, meaning expanding into more crops and bringing in more money. As a farmer, you need protection. And no, I don't mean walking around with security men around you. You need to protect yourself from losses that may come from things that are out of your control, like loss of rain or floods. Insurance may seem like a complicated subject, but it's not. That's why we have caught in Niza Banda, an insurance expert from Acre Africa, to simplify it for us. The previous season, I planted about uh, six hectares of maize. Mm -hmm. Then I was expecting 1,000 plus bag. But as at the moment, because of this drought, mm -hmm. uh, for me, there's a total disaster. 
expecting about 1,000 plus bags, but I, maybe I can only invest five bags. That, this is a huge loss. I'm sure there was a bit yeah. of an investment that was required. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. For me, I spent about 70,000 kwach. For me, a starting point that is critical to this discussion is understanding what have you done to bridge the gap when you've faced losses. That's what has made me to diversify. Because mm -hmm. once you have different things that you are doing, when you are hit with a, a loss in one area, you will survive from the other area. That's great. Sure. Crop diversification you know, yeah, as like, a means. It's like an internal insurance policy, yeah. right? <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> mm. right. So have you considered insurance in the past or is this...? This year is when I've had to consider it much because I've seen what can happen. With insurance, it allows you to remove the heavy burden from yourself and pass it on to a financial institution, which is an insurance company. There are specific insurance products that have been developed, like weather index insurance, okay. that covers you as a farmer against losses associated to rainfall. When you have poor rainfall, the insurance company is then liable to compensate you for losses that are associated to the loss of that rainfall. Right. It also takes care of excess rainfall events. So essentially what happens is you get into a contract with an insurance company, you pay a small percentage of what you would like covered. You may choose to have your inputs covered, meaning you just want to recover what you've invested. Like you mentioned, you spent 70,000 kwacha on your maize inputs. Or we could cover the yield, the entire 1,000 plus bags that you're expecting. Would you want to get insurance for the money that you've put in? Or would you be looking to get insurance for what you're expecting for to expected get yield? Fantastic. Mr. Banda is a businessman. He is a businessman. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of the premium, we charge a percentage. So you can be anywhere from around 3%, 5%. So this is a once-off paid at the beginning of the season. Okay. The insurance premium amount is calculated at between 3 to 5% of the cost of inputs or expected yield. In Mr. Abuino's case, he spent 70,000 kwacha on inputs for the maize. So, 5% of 70,000 is 3,500 kwacha, which he will pay as the premium. In case of crop failure, the farmer will be charged 10% of the payout or compensation called excess. So, if he gets total crop failure, that means 70,000 kwacha minus the 7,000 kwacha excess, meaning the farmer will get 63,000 kwacha as compensation. If he ensures against the yield of 1,000 bags at 350 kwacha per bag, insured amount will be 350,000 kwacha. 5% of this is 17,500 kwacha, which will be his premium. For the payout, with an excess charge of 10%, he will get paid 350,000 kwacha minus 35,000 kwacha, which will be 315,000 kwacha. In what scenario am I now able to claim the benefit of my policy and how is it paid out? With the weather index insurance, we're using satellite to monitor right. and as such, our payouts are automatically triggered. If, say, we're saying the average for Mr. Abuino's farm is 100 millimeters, mm -hmm. we can set, say, 80 as our trigger and say anything below 80 means Mr. Abuino gets a payout. Right. And the size of the payout will increase the lower the amount of rainfall he receives. Right. Similar is the same for excess rainfall. And then once those payouts are approved, then a payout is made automatically. <laughs> Meanwhile, work is still going on fixing the drip lines. This is not how you read the weather as a farmer. To be a modern farmer, you need accurate weather information. This will help you make the right decisions for your farm. As farmers, we need to be climate smart. How do we become climate smart? We have invited Nangandu Munkombwe to teach us. For me, I don't know what the weather wants today. Mm. Whether it wants to be cold, mm. or hot, or sunny. Like, we don't know exactly. Being a farmer, mm -hmm. we are actually a powerful meteorologist. <laughs> wow. Without uh, any gadget. Okay. Because we you can just tell that mm. it will rain today just from the movement of the wind. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard how he gets his weather information. I don't know if that is making you happy or not. 
Yes, a lot of farmers do that, but it's not recommended. Mr. Obuino, you can get your weather information from ZMD, which is Zambia Meteorological Department, through the radio and other farmers like you. I can see you have a smartphone. There's a WhatsApp group for ZMD. So from what you've shared with us, how you get to know the weather information for the day, do you also do that for the season? Before planting, normally you get the information from radio, TV. How did you use it? For instance, when you want to apply some fertilizers, top dressing, mm -hmm. you say, no, if it will rain, no, maybe on 15th. Mm -hmm. On 14th, I have to apply. Sometimes, like maize, we do what we call dry planting. Mm -hmm. So if you have the information to say, it will rain on the 1st October, mm -hmm. like a week before you can plant your maize. Right. Yes. Why do you think farmers should always have the right weather information every season? It uh, allows them to make decisions on what plant or what crop variety to plant for that particular season. For example, last season we didn't have enough rains and a lot of farmers who received that, they opted for other options rather than crops, they went to Higari, some they went to chicken, okay. some they went to goat production. Mr. Abuino should get accurate weather information from ZMD. He can then use this information to guide his daily activities in the farm. If it's a dry day, he can plan for spraying or drying his maize. For the season, if the weather predicts drought, then it can help in decision making by planting drought tolerant crops and keeping livestock like goats that can tolerate drought. But Abuino has been having a challenge with the weather he gets through the radio. So sometimes you find that they will say in Rusaka it will rain, mm -hmm. but Rusaka is big. All right. Maybe sometimes it will rain somewhere in Katowa, mm -hmm. Kasisi, here in Chongwe, it won't rain. So you say no, the information was not accurate, but somewhere within Rusaka it rained. Epixa is a digital solution that is looking to help farmers to get location-specific weather information. It is currently in Chipata and Petauke, but will be rolled out to other areas soon. Epixa provides a seasonal forecast that helps farmers to make key decisions on the farm. So like for this one, this is for Petauke, uh, we are able to relate to farmers using the colors. So for example, the orange one uh, it shows below normal to normal. The green one, normal to normal. The blue one, above normal to normal. It starts from October, November, December, for every month. Until the season. Until the season ends in March. Ah. When a farmer receives the seasonal forecast, he will look at um, the crop information sheet. Uh, this sheet provides uh, information on the varieties of those particular crops, the days to maturity, and the water requirement for that crop. Like for last year, the forecast for Petawoke, they said the rains will be normal to below normal. So we advise farmers to stick to drought resistant varieties and also early maturing varieties. The good thing is that farmers will be able to access that information on their smartphones. There's an app, it's called the Pixar app, where you can find the, the climate information. Then it will show us the start of the rains, the ends of the rain, the length of the rain, and the season of the rain. In addition to providing site-specific climate information, the Pixar app offers a variety of decision-making tools for farmers, such as how to create a budget. Well, imagine as a farmer, you have accurate information about the weather and you plant uh, the right varieties of seeds. What can happen? Good harvest, right? Yes, for sure. You mm -hmm. have good harvest and you can make a lot of money. A lot of money. And sure. you know what to avoid as well. Yes, yes. So that you don't go into losses. Yeah. Arthur has been growing maize, an irrigated field mainly for winter maize and a larger rain-fed main field which has not done so well because of the drought. Arthur also keeps livestock, which need a high protein feed to do well. Can we help with both these challenges at one go? Well, with the help of our friends in the graphics department here at Munda Makeover, we have prepared a special animation to show you how. 
Maize is one of Zambia's favorite crops. But if it's grown too often in the same field, people aren't the only ones looking forward to a tasty meal. Pests get to hear about it too, and they multiply. Diseases also take advantage and spread more quickly. And with repeated planting, on the same spot, the soil can run out of the nutrients the crop needs to grow strong and healthy. And when there's a poor harvest, where are the goats, cows and other livestock going to get feed all year round? It's a problem. So what's the solution? Well, crop rotation is very important. For example, planting a maize crop one season and then planting legume crop the next season, following the principles of conservation agriculture. But today, we're going to find out how adding an intercrop of Bracaria will also help feed our livestock. Okay, now first, which crops make the best companions? Maize is a plant that loves nitrogen. The more it gets, the stronger it grows and the bigger the cobs it produces. Fertilizers, however, are expensive and chemical fertilizers can have a long-term impact on soil health. So, reducing the amount needed can save money and help protect the environment. The solution? Plant a crop in rotation with the maize that fixes nitrogen in the soil and so feeds the maize the following season. No need for so much fertilizer. Typically, these are legumes and include pigeon pea, groundnuts, soya beans, and cow peas. And not only will they help improve the soil, they produce their own delicious food crops as well. It's a win-win! Now, having chosen our plants, we need to integrate a grass as well, since we also want to feed our livestock. To find out how best to integrate these crops, the International Maize and Wheat Improvement Center spent several years experimenting to find out the best techniques. Today, we are going to feature their solution, a three-way diversification strategy which works well for livestock farmers with maize, legumes, and brocaria. First, select a piece of land. Let's say it's one hectare. Divide the field in two and plant maize on one side and your chosen legume crop on the other. The maize should be planted in rows 90 centimeters apart and with a plant spacing within the row of 25 centimeters. The legume should also be planted in rows on the other side of the field 45 centimeters apart. But again, with a plant spacing of 25 centimeters within the rows. This two-sided approach is to allow for easy crop rotation between the seasons avoiding pest and disease buildup, and to enable the maize to take advantage of the extra nitrogen fixed by the legumes. The Bracaria grass is planted following the maize and legume rows along two sides of the field. Establishing the first grass in the first cropping season can be challenging and may require gap filling and replanting. Bracaria is an evergreen crop, so once the hedger rows are established, it can be harvested to feed the livestock twice a year. The grass can be cut with a sickle at about 5 cm above the ground. Plan when you intend to cut the grass, for example, in the dry season. Cutting at this time helps maintain growth and stops the grass shading the maize. The cut grass can be stored by making fodder bales, which can then be fed to the animals when there is limited feed. Well, that's it. Three crops from one field. And we're done fixing the drip lines. We're using a solar system to pump water. This will save on energy and reduce cost. The drip lines will deliver water directly onto the base of the plant using far less water, meaning he can plant more crops. He'll also cut off labor, bumper harvest and more money in the pocket. I've learned a lot of things that will help me for the rest of my life. I'm very much happy for the drip lines because uh -huh. I, I really had the challenge in terms of watering. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so, well, yeah. that's it for today. We will see you next week on another episode of Munda Mekoba.